Okay, this is awesome. I'm really glad that you are joining us here this um, this day or this evening. In my case, it's evening because I am in mid Norway. So it's um, a little bit past seven. And all right, um, we have a lot of information to pass on to you guys here tonight. And I hope um, everything will make sense and be helpful to you. Um, all right. I can't talk and paint at the same time, so I have a lot of things that are finished. So we will go through some finished steps here. And so let's talk about these fundamentals. This is the main painting that we will um, use as a base for our studies, right? Um, let me open here some image. Let me see if I find it right. All right, talk a little bit about these fundamentals. And um, there are different universal fundamentals for all subjects into um, painting. And these are principles of design, composition, values, colors, and so on that I encourage you to research and understand and practice. And um, we have very limited time, so I can talk uh, into details about these things. Um, I do have different approaches to painting skin and hair that are can be more complex to what we will see here tonight, but I hope this method we will see now will make sense to you. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the overview. Basically, we will do a research and gather references. We will put emphasis on observing these images and prepare a drawing or a sketch. And then we start with the base color for the skin, work the shadows first, then the highlights, and last, we add some texturing and fix anything that needs in the image. And this will be the overall process. All right, so we will start with skin here. The first step, um, you will want to gather some references um, like, um, like this here. These are different references that I gathered from uh, some DVDs and books um, from an art models collection. They are all in neutral lighting to help us to see that there isn't one basic color to all skin types. It's a complex subject. Um, it will vary from person to person and um, ethnical background. But with these principles we will see now, you will be able to paint any kind of skin, basically. So you decide on a character or a person that you want to portray. And you do observe, uh, observations on your references. Um, we can zoom in a little bit and observe a little bit. Just to do some random um, observations here. Um, you see in this uh, person, in this model here, the skin around the eye, um, or the eyelids here, they are much smoother, softer than the rest of the skin. And if we go to this other person, for example, of this other model, uh, we notice some freckles, for example, some other skin pigmentation. And we also see a little bit of the pores. If we come here, we hear some, we see some expression marks and so on. So you want to ask questions. What do I see? Um, how does light behave in this material? Um, for example, is the skin oily? Is it dry? Right? What color changes do you see? Here, for example, we see the pores and they are basically some um, dark and light dots. We see very faintly here a little bit of some blood vessels. I try to zoom in a little bit more. So these are things you want to observe, right? I can't stress enough, enough the importance of observing. All right. So the next step here, let's see if I find the right image, is... Mm, 
if you see here, um, the next step is to find a base color for these subjects. You can get your color picker and you may want to play a little bit, use your time. And for example, take the shadows, right? Take the shadows. And let's say the, the darker shadows, the lighter shadows. And the mid tones. And for example, some lighter or some darker highlights. This was kind of like, but. <laughs> So you want to do some explorations with your color picker and see the different um, values and colors in your subject. And before we continue, I just want to make sure that um, we all understand the thing about values. When I talk about light tones and shadows and so on, these are the value terms that we will use for this webinar. Maybe not all of you are familiar with values. Um, in a quick explanation here, values are, you see here, the lightest color and the darkest color here. So the values are these in-betweens, the tons, right? Um, if we divide them in five main areas, we have the lightest values on the top, the darkest in the bottom here. And all this area here, they compose the mid-tones. They can be the dark lights or light mid-tones, light shadows or dark mid-tones. So everything here in this area will be the mid-tones. All right, so now that we have a little bit of um, look on values, we will talk a, a lot about light, um, shadows, mid-tones, and so on. So we, we need to be sure that everybody understands this. All right, so that you have done your research, you have done some studies and observations. So decide on a subject that you want to portray. Um, I will open my reference here, reference image. And I have chosen to work with this model here. And I have some additional images. In this image here, we don't have a very good um, resolution for the details on her skin or her hair. Um, but I have these other images here where we can see some of the structure of her skin. For example, the freckles, the pores, the direction of the hair in the eyebrows. And we can also see some undertones. Um, if you don't know what an undertone is, it is these different colors that we see in the skin, right? We see some patches that are a little bit greenish, a little bit grayish, um, a little bit um, purple. They can have a little bit of yellow, orange, and so on. So these are very small color variations that we see here in the skin, a little bit uh, redder on the, on the cheeks, for example, and the chin. So you want to pay attention to that. But all right, we have you have done your research, you have your references. So when you do that, you can do a drawing or a sketch. Let me open one more image here. Mm -hmm. You can do some exploration with drawings or sketches. Um, you can uh, do some fine drawing or you can do a very messy drawing that's up to you as long as you can understand. I did these two explorations here and I will go for this one. Oh, 
All right. So you have your drawing. And here is the file with all the layers. So we have you done your research, you have your references, you have your drawing. We start by adding a base color to the subject. This base color, you can come back on your research and you can get it from here, for example. Here are some colors that I found for her skin and here is a very um, mid-tone base color. I can show another panel here where I did some research about the base colors of these references. So this is just an exercise, right? So find the color that would, that if you have to define a color for overall for the subject, which color would that be? So here are some examples. And it will be most likely a mid tone. All right. So here's the base color that I had ready, but I can show you just quickly how we do that. I could, I can, I, I think I will come here to the color picker on the reference. Um, I will use this mid tone here as a base color just to show. And you can have your brush in um, full opacity for this part. Oh, just one more thing. Um, I think it's a good idea to have your drawing as a top layer, like here. So everything that you do, you do underneath it. So it will be there to guide you. All right, so you do the painting, a flat painting with the base color for your reference. All right, I'll delete and use this one that's ready. And once you do that, um, you want to observe where are the darkest shadows that you see in your reference it's a good idea to start there i have mine ready here so before after i add the darkest shadows so how do we do that i normally use a glazing technique um, you can use the, I will use the color picker here just to be easier for you, but you want to try on your own um, just to go on a color wheel here and choose your colors more intuitively as an exercise. But if you are starting out or if you don't have much time, go to your reference. And I, I think this area here or this here, for example, they are the darkest shadows. So I take a color here, then I come back to my airbrush. By the way, I'm using a digital airbrush here. You can use any brush that you want because this technique is a principle, so it can be applied with any brush. And I will have it in very low opacity, like um, around six or 7%. So this is how I apply the shadows. I will look, I will observe where they are. And I will go painting, applying them. Here is mostly in shadow. I have some shadows here too. Um, you may be worried about that we are not using the exact right colors that we see in the reference because there is a lot of color variation on her skin. But don't worry about that. We will, we will work on these colors or what we call undertones later on during the process. 
So you want to see where your shadows are. And notice here, for example, we only have darker shadows in the left or in the right side of the image. Sorry about, not left, but right side. All right, so since we have very limited time, I will just close this and show what I had done. All right, so this is how it will be in this case here. We have done the darkest shadows, so we add the lightest shadows. This is what they would look like, right? Before, after. So the lightest shadows, it will be the, the same process that you did with the darker shadows. You go there in your reference. If this is the darkest, right? It will be a transition between the darkest shadows and the mid-tones, right? Somewhere around here or here, for example. And you will use the same glazing technique. So I am I'm going to the undertones now. We see here there is it's a kind of a flat when it comes to colors um, so far. But you see here some in, some interesting thing is that just by applying the darker shadows and the lighter shadows, we already have very good uh, shapes for our subject. So right now we will work on the undertones, right? These different colors that we see on her face. We see patches of red and pink and yellow, a little bit green, a little bit um, orange and so on. And this is what they look like before and after before, after. So here we have, it's like a map of colors. Um, we have over the shadows. All right, so how do we do that? I'll show you quickly. Um, you want to choose, for example, some saturated colors right now. Uh, we see some reds, let's apply some reds as a demonstration some reds um, reds and pinks and so on. I'll choose a little bit of a saturated color, some mid-tone, and then it's it will continue to be in this glazing technique. I'll have a little bit bigger um, brush. So we will apply. Where do we see that is a little bit pinkish or reddish? For example, here, um, here I think it's slightly more to orange. So you you want to observe very well. Observe more and work less, actually. A little bit um, pink, a little bit of orange. All right, but it looks kind of horrible like this, right? It looks kind of clownish. What you want to do is to get your layer to an overlay blending mode and lower your opacity considerably. So this way, you see you, you have the colors. It's all very subtle. And it blends in a very natural way. Let's apply a little bit of um, oranges. Here, for example. Mm -hmm. And so on, a little bit of yellows. It's all very subtle. So I will skip this here and show you the finished one, which is this one. All right, now that you have um, your shapes and your darkest lights, oops, your shapes and your shadows in place and your undertones. Now it's more um, applying some basic colors. Let me minimize this here. 
just apply some basic colors to the lips and the eyes and the eyebrows and so on. This is all very basic. There isn't any texturing. Just some base colors. And once you have done that, um, yeah, you want to work now the highlights. All right. You want to work the highlights. And that's how we do it, with the same principles as we use to applying the shadows. Um, I'll start with the dark highlights first. Before, I can zoom in a little bit so it will be a little bit clearer. So, oops. Here's with the dark highlights, without it. Okay, so we have applied the dark highlights. And last but not least, we apply the light highlights, which are these, the whitest uh, spots that you see here. I'll do so on a lips later on. All right, so if we zoom out, you can see that we don't have any texturing, but we have all the right values in place. We have the shapes in place. And this is pretty much what we need to read an image. So adding texture is kind of icing the cake. So once you have done all this, you want to come and look in your, at your image and you want to ask yourself, okay, what can I fix now? What can I fine tune? What I can add? So now it's about fine tuning, right? Adding small details like I'm doing here, I'm showing to you. Fine tuning. Adding these. I can come back here. I think this was the lips, right? And so on. Adding these small details based on the principles that we have seen so far. And now we are going to the texture. We are almost done with this first part and we will soon have a break for some questions and answers. So let's go to the applying some texture. Now that we have fine-tuned our image and added some um, missing things, all right, I use different methods for painting freckles and pores. And we will use an airbrush to do that. This is a sample of the brush. I can, I can zoom in here. All right, this is an airbrush, right? It looks strange. How do we do, how do we apply freckles? First, I will show you how it is here. You see here, at 100% opacity. And here is how I have it for the work. I have it with a lower opacity. Without, with freckles. Okay, I'll do a quick demonstration on how we do that. Mm, I choose a color here. You think about a little bit between orange and reds. Somewhere in this area here, um, a little slightly saturated dark mid tone. And I want to find a jitter. Okay, um, control oh, brush panels, brush, brush control panels in general. And we have. Let me see if I find um, the jitter here. I'm pretty sure I had it somewhere. Where is the jitter? 
I think I have um, messed a little bit with my panels. See if I find it here then. Um, green, that profile, press it, smoking and go. Stroke cheater. Sorry about that. I had a mess with my panels earlier today. All right, so we have the stroke cheater and we go on full with it. Number four is the top. I'll make my brush smaller. I will remove this sample here. Much smaller and think about a size that that can emulate freckles. Um, full opacity so you can see it. You can go dotting on your subject like this. And you can vary the size. So you go doing that on all the areas where you want to apply the freckles. And you can select, for example, a hard light or an overlay mode, depending on the skin color and depending on the colors you are working on. I'll choose a highlight, oops, a hard light for this one. So you see here, you put it, uh, your layer on low opacity and you go during that. So I'll turn this off and get the one that I had done before. It all takes time, so you want to take your time. All right, so now we will apply some pores. And when we saw, if I can uh, come back and open my references, here we have seen the pore structure. It's a lot of tiny white dots and dark dots. So we can apply that here too. I'll show you the light pores first at 100% opacity. And you see here how it looks without and with the pores in 100% opacity. But you want, you want to lower your opacity like this. I have it very low, almost not showing. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, it's very much the same principle as you use for the pores. Oops, for the freckles, sorry about that. Um, you go, for example, on a very light value and you make your brush size much smaller to be about the size of the pores that you want to emulate. And you go dotting about, right? And when you do that in different sizes, you can select an overlay mode and then you lower the opacity. Full opacity, low opacity. It's like it's meant to be um, very subtle. Like we almost don't see it, but it is there. That's what will give um, the texturing the right quality. It will make it very believable. So I get rid of this demonstration layer and let the right layer. And the same process with the dark pores. Here are them finished before, after, and here is, here's how they look at 100%. It is the same process, but you will choose a dark value or a dark color. All right, so now that you have applied the texture that you want, it's all about finishing your image. I'll zoom out. And I will, I recommend at this point that we take this drawing at a much lower opacity. Actually, we can get rid of the drawing just so you see what we have done so far. 
So now it's all about finishing your image using those principles. Um, you want to add what's missing in details here. All right, so I add some lip texture. And here is the lip texture in 100% opacity. The same principles that we used for the freckles and the pores, but just using some fine lines. This is 100% in the light texturing and 100% in a dark texturing, but you don't want it to be like this, right? So we have them in low opacity. All right, so the rest is about just fine tuning. I'll zoom out again. So some fine tuning here. It's just about adding a little bit details and polishing what wasn't there. So that is it. We are pretty much finished with this part, first part of the skin. And <laughs> Well, I leave it over to you, Tanya, and the audience. If you have some, we can do some quick uh, Q&A. What do you think? OK, that sounds great. Um, so I'm going to go back to the very beginning when you open the sketch. And many people are wondering, how did you create the drawing? OK, I have three different ways for creating a drawing. I can. I can draw it directly over the reference, or I can draw it uh, with pencils, for example, on a paper and then scan it. And I can also do a grid, for example. I will, I'll try to draw it here just to quickly show. Let's, oops, let's take this jitter away. I'll just quickly demonstrate. Let's say that this is my original reference picture, right? And I want to do a drawing here. The third way that I draw is you make a grid here and you have the same grid in here. So it, you will look at the grid, right? And you will do it from there. Sorry, it doesn't look much pretty, <laughs> but <laughs> that no, is that is it's a principle. But for this class, I just quickly um, drew it directly over the reference image. I can open the drawing here, but um, the hair it was pretty much from memory. Okay. So you can you can mix the techniques. It's um, different ways to do that. There's always a hundred different ways to do things, and you know some people were wondering if you actually used the clone and you just drew right on top of the image. That's oh no, <laughs> I don't use the clones ever. <laughs> right. So, but for people that are beginners, yes, you can do it that way. Yes. Yes. Please. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Let me see what else we have here. Um, sorry, it takes a while to scroll through these. People are very curious. We see that you're using a lot of layers and what is your reasoning behind that? Okay, the reason is because I like to come back. Let's say I can do a quick demonstration. Let's say that I am not happy with my shadows, right? I did the shadows, but I'm not happy with it. So I can do it all over. I can remove it. I use a lot of layers because I can be sure that at any time of the process, I can come back and redo what I'm not happy with. So let's take, for instance, this base color, right? Look what happens. I don't, let's say I don't like this base color. So I want to come back there and make a blue base color. It's totally absurd, but let's do it. So this is why I use layers because I can come back anytime in the process and make sure that I can tweak or adjust whatever I need to. 
I hope okay. this helps. <laughs> yes, yes, it makes perfect sense to me. Um, mm -hmm. I'll see if anybody has further questions. Um, that everybody's also noticing that you're using, I know the airbrush is one of your favorites. Did you use the airbrush for the entire skin painting? Oh yes, yes, yes. I have used the same airbrush all the time. The only, I can do a demonstration here very quickly of the different settings that I use for this airbrush. I can just do it quickly here. I can zoom in. Let's just remove this panel. All right, here is the airbrush that I have used all the time for the flat parts or when we uh, we start with the mid with the mid tone, very down here. I will have it at hundred percent opacity, very um, flat, strong. And when I start applying the shadows or the highlights, let's do a highlight here. I just lower the opacity very low to around between 7 and 10%. Um, let me do another layer here. And then we have, we apply the glazing process. And let's say if you want to apply the skin texturing, I go here on the jitter, on the jitter setting, and I put it to 4, and it's the same brush, right? Let's increase the opacity and diminish um, the size. And you see here what it does. And if we want to um, do some like the lips here, it's just to remove the jitter again, have the airbrush in a very um, small size. And then you see it's a very versatile brush. You can do a lot with it. So yeah, it is the same brush in during this whole entire process. Okay, fantastic. I know we now have 15 minutes left. Mm -hmm. um, a couple questions that go a little bit further than just what you're showing here. So I think I'll I'll stop questions right now and I'll let you oh. continue with the hair. Want to okay. make you have enough time. Yeah, yeah. For the hair, it will be a little bit faster because it will be very much repetition of, of what we have done here. We will continue using the same brush and the same principles. Okay, so I'll close this here and I'll get started. All right, it is the same file, but uh, not the same file. I mean, it is the same image, but now I have flattened all those layers. So it's just one flat layer, uh, what where they use for the canvas. And we will repeat pretty, pretty much of the process. So for the hair, it is the same thing. Gather your references, make observations, and you want to start with a base color that you it will most likely be a mid tone, a dark mid tone, unless the hair is very um, light. So I have it ready here. I will show mostly the finished steps because we have so little time and this one hour passes so fast. All right. So here, um, I'm sorry, I will make my drawing visible. So here is the drawing. I have, I'll lower the opacity and as you can see here, I will also work underneath this drawing. So I have the base color. How do we do the base color? Right, um, if you have missed the beginning of this webinar, don't worry because it will be available um, online at a later time and um, I'll just quickly explain. You see here the dark colors, right? The base color will be what is the overall color that makes this hair? It doesn't need to be something very accurate. It's just it just needs something to start. So let's get this one, for example. I think it's very close to what I had here. So let me let me lower my opacity a little bit. And let me test it. Yeah, 
it's very much it's almost the same tone actually all right so you choose a base color to do your hair and you fill it in the design and the shape of the hairstyle that you have chosen and it will be like this and then we go for the darker shadows again you apply you will observe where do i see the darker shadows of that hair in the i don't have it for this reference so what i have to do now is i have to calculate everything based on what i see here and try to transfer that in the painting right so i have done my calculations and i'm not sure if they are right but here you are I have added the darker shadows and it's pretty much a glazing technique like we have done for the skin i can just quickly demonstrate it um, you will select for example with the color picker or with your eyes i can just do this for example just quickly and you lower the opacity of your brush to eight percent or somewhere down low uh, depending on the brush that you use and you will try to find where you will apply the darker shadows for your particular lighting and subject right so due to the short time i will skip to something that is finished and repeat the process for the lighter shadows before after and the whole process here is pretty much a repetition of what we have seen on the skin, right? And we go to the lighter mid-tones here, um, which I can demonstrate how you do. You just get, make your airbrush a little bit smaller and follow the hair structure, more or less like this it's uh, in very low opacity all right let me delete this here <laughs> um, there's one more thing when i started this painting i wanted it to have just a white background but later on during the process i have added um, a background color because I thought it would add a little bit more interest and make it more moody. So I make it visible here. You can see the full painting process online on the Painter uh, YouTube channel. All right, so I add my mid-tones, I add my darker highlights here, before, after. And I start refining the structure of the hair before, after. And how do I do that? Um, I select a little bit of a mid-tone or a lighter color. I can just um, remove here. I'll make a quick, very quick demonstration. Uh, make your airbrush a little bit thin in size and you follow the hair structure. We have a light value, right? And you want to use, for example, an, an overlay blending mode or a hard light that depends a little bit on the color that you use. And you will want to make your layer um, in low opacity. So everything will look very, very subtle. Subtlety has been the key during the whole process. So we continue on. And here's what the 100% opacity looks like. I can zoom in a little bit. So you see that principle, and I use overlay mode, but in 
low opacity. So for the hair here, you want to add the hairline. You don't forget to do that. Add the hairline here over the forehead. Very easy to do. I'll demonstrate now. Have a very thin brush. These uh, hairs around the forehead, they are very thin. So very thin airbrush, a little bit um, the color that fits your subject. And just, you know, follow uh, the natural style of the hair that you are portraying. You can use a little, um, I'm still basically here all the time in low opacity. But you can change the opacity um, at your own taste. So this is how um, I paint the hairline. And now that we have done that, we continue adding um, the hair strands. I can zoom out a little bit. For example, here, the same principle, like this. You follow the hair shape and style. Soft edge on this side and you also go fixing and adding the things that are missing in your image. Soft hair on this side, before, after. And, and you, you want to fix your shadows along the way, small things here and there. Edge fine tuning, which is this. Fine tune the shadows. So it's all about fine tuning now, polishing what you have started. All right, so now uh, we are almost done with the hair part. I'll try to make the rest here in a couple of minutes. Um, for the same is like the skin, right? Now we will fine do the fine hair structure. And here's how it looks before and after. The fine hair structure is basically just to continue with darker strands and lighter strands where the highlights should go. And you can use overlay blending mode, for example. And you can also remember to add a little bit of mass. Hair that goes in all directions. Like. Um, and. There we are, we go refining, adding these hair strokes and fixing. And last but not least. You want to add the proper lighting of the environment. And in here we have a greenish um, and a little bit yellowish environment with different colors, blue, green, and so on. And I add some um, green cold rim light. Not so easy to see here. Um, and you go fixing your image and so on. And I'll show you how I do the environment lighting. This is, for example, 100% of it. And here's in low opacity. We almost don't see it, but it is here. Right? How do we do that? You will look at your environment and see the colors. In this case, we have these greenish bluish colors. So you catch some of that. Make your brush thick again. And we will apply these colors on the edges. 
and we will add an overlay mode for example and low opacity but you can also add use a hard light i like um, to use both so i mostly use overlay and hard light all the time so i remove this so you can see here and it's all about icing the cake right look at your image and ask are my shadows right are my highlights right are my colors right and you can simply fine tune it using these principles that we have seen and last but not least i like a darker hair so i add this layer here and here is how i added the darker hair it's a flat color with a little bit of ambient color here in the edges or and here but i have it as overlay and in low opacity you almost don't see it but it makes a big difference and last but not least i removed the drawing so now we have the painting and that's pretty much it <laughs> Tanya, now it's your turn. <laughs> all right. First of all, I want to let you know how many compliments you are getting on your organized presentation. And everybody has learned so much from this because you came in totally prepared. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, OK, so and I did have to tell a few people that they were asking for things that are going beyond your presentation. I apologize, we're at, almost at the top of the hour. So I'm gonna run through the questions that have been asked a couple times. Um, number one is, what is the size of your document? Or do you have a typical painting size that you work at? Um, for this presentation, I worked at a medium resolution. So it's not very big. I can try to see the size now. Um, size um, it's very small actually it's a thousand five hundred pixels per um, thousand seven hundred and thirty eight pixels I always use pixels here but my typical size will be something uh, like five per three thousand pixels or something and always in high resolution but for this presentation I actually did a small uh, medium or small size actually okay mm -hmm. It actually makes sense because when you're presenting online, things get slowed up. So I understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, what kind of tablet are you using? I'm using an old Vacuum Intuos Pro. It's old. I think it's about five years old or something, but it still works. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have an older tablets as well, and they work great. Um, yeah. Back to the beginning, when you were using the airbrush to create the freckles, we could kind of hear mm -hmm. you tapping on the tablet. Is there a reason yeah. that you're tapping rather than stroking? Um, the thing is, I can just quickly try to demonstrate it. If you tap, I can um, try to find the jitter again. Or I can simply demonstrate without the jitter, perhaps. Yeah, yeah that's um, fine. If you, if you do... If you don't tap, if you just do, just do the strokes, right? In a jittery mode, I can uh, increase my opacity here. In a jittery mode, um, the, the jittery will be very mechanical, right? You will see that there is a jittery stroke there. Why do I tap? Because then I have the, the dots at more random spaces, which is um, very natural instead of a mechanical look. Does that make sense? Yes, mm. it, uh, it makes sense to me. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see here. Do you ever turn on pick up underlying color in the layers? Pick up underlying colors? Yeah, I can do that too. But I don't know. I think it depends a little bit on what I'm working on. Um, I, yeah, I can do that. Sometimes I don't work with references. And sometimes I do, I pick up the colors that I have already in a painting. Yeah. Okay. And then 
I think I'm going to make this the last question. And for the most part, we were able to address everybody's questions. So I, I'm mm -hmm. feeling good about this because you were very thorough. You're do, you, awesome. do you always label your layers? No, actually, I never label them. They oh, are yeah. very unorganized and they are actually out of order. I only label them for this presentation so I wouldn't get lost. <laughs> Oh, okay. I assume that you labeled them because if you wanted to go back and change. So I was wrong. I apologize to whoever I answered. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I am actually totally unorganized. I work on chaos, but I know exactly where my layers are, even though they are out of order. So, but for this presentation, I have, I have numbered some of them and I have uh, labeled so exactly. So if we need to come back, we don't get lost. <laughs> Thank you so much for this great presentation today. It was wonderful. Thank you for all the support files for everybody. Is there anything that you would like to tell everybody today? <laughs> I uh, yeah, oh, I just want to say a big, huge thank you to everybody who attended here today, because I know you are taking one hour of your precious time to be here together so i appreciate that as well i'm very happy that this webinar has been helpful to you and that you liked it and i really hope that we have opportunity to do something like this again and i want to thank you tanya and coral painter for all the support on this amazing software <laughs>